Hello, welcome to the Warframe Collective. Today, we are going to be covering Railjack, and we are going to be showing new and returning players how to acquire their first Railjack. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the market. Once you're in the market, just type Cephalon in the search bar, and Cephalon size should pop up. Go ahead and buy that blueprint. Once you buy that blueprint, go ahead and head over to your foundry. I think Cephalon Psi should be in your miscellaneous section or your modular section. Either way, once you find Cephalon Psi, go ahead and start building him. I believe he has a build time of about 10 minutes, but I have pre-built him for the sake of the video. And so, once you claim Cephalon Psi, go ahead and proceed from there so at this point you should receive a message from Cephalon Psy and the message should contain the rising tide quest within it so once you have that quest go ahead and listen to what Cephalon Psy has to say and I believe you can start the quest directly from the codex so go ahead and head over to your codex scroll over to rising tide and start the quest from there. So, this quest can be a little repetitive. It is a lot of back and forth, back and forth, and a lot of the missions play out kind of like a pseudo defense mission. But the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your dojo and fast travel to your dry dock. If you don't use fast travel, start using fast travel because it's the most convenient way to get around any hub location. So, go ahead and press start, pull up your fast travel menu, and travel to the dry dock. And from the dry dock, that's where you should be able to view and modify your rail jack once you have one. But, go ahead and head to the objective location, and from here, you should have a conversation with Cephalon Psy, and I think there may be a cutscene that plays, so we're just going to skip forward so we don't spoil anything from you guys. Okay guys, so now you should be ready to start your first mission. Your first mission is going to bring you to Mars, and it's going to be to recover the fuselage for your railjack. Now, these missions start off pretty easy, but they do get a little harder as the missions go on. And like I said, all of these missions pretty much play a, like a pseudo-defense mission. So, you shouldn't have too many problems with this. Like, I'm doing this all with Excalibur. And if anything, if you have a decent crowd control frame, you should have no problem defending the objective locations. What I would say is eventually they start sending out these little Vombalist targets and so you're going to have to kill those before the process will continue. But eventually on the harder versions of this, they're going to not only send out Vombalist, but they're going to also send out Sentience. So be ready for that. And as you can see, if any hostiles are inside the circle, the process will immediately stop. So make sure you defend the circle as best as possible moving on so as you can see at a certain point your progress is just gonna stop and these little vombalist assholes are gonna come and these dudes are kinda takey but you should have no problem taking these guys down just remember you can't continue the process until you clear these assholes out so you have to prioritize these guys and once you do that, just run back in the circle and the process should start counting down again. Now, this is pretty much the quest structure of all of the part recovery missions that you're going to be doing for this quest. Also, DE, Void Dash still sucks. Or they call it Void Sling. Void Sling. They need to bring back Void Dash. But anyway. Yeah, this is pretty much what the mission structure is going to be like for every part recovery mission. And as you can see, we did recover the fuselage. So, 
At this point, what you want to do is you want to head to navigation. Go ahead and head to your dry dock. So boot up the dojo and go ahead and fast travel to the dry dock. And the thing that may suck is if you haven't done any Railjack missions, I do suggest you follow my Railjack credit form if you haven't watched that video. But if you haven't done any Railjack missions, you may not have some of the components needed to build this. So keep that in mind. The only reason why the resources were not a problem for me was because I actually posted a credit farm video that actually coincides with Railjack. But as you can see, go ahead and donate the necessary resources and then you should be able to proceed on the next part of your quest. Also, the entire time you're doing this, be prepared to listen to Cephalon sigh whine about how he's not a viable Cephalon to pilot the Railjack or whatever the fuck. He's over here going through an emotional breakdown, so be prepared to listen to that guy whine a lot. Anyway, go ahead and head to your navigation bring up your quest menu and your next part recovery requisition is going to take you to earth so once again like I said this is just same type of pseudo defense mission get to the objective area defend the circle kill the sentience when they pop up yeah as long as you have a weapon with somewhat decent range you should be able to send a lot of firepower down range before these guys can even, even enter the bubble. Don't be like me though. I'm kind of negligent. But as you guys can see, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So once again, go ahead and head to your navigation and travel to your dojo. And once you reach your dojo, Go ahead and travel to the dry dock, and that way we can start building the next part of this. But also, be prepared to listen to Cephalon Sai go on and on and on. So if you're a new player, this can get a little bit expensive having to go back and forth and build all these different railjack parts. The only advice I can give you is to do the best credit farm for a new player. I have an extensive video covering that on my channel. But once you head to your dry dock, go ahead and head to the objective location and Cephalon Sai will pop back up and he'll talk your ear off for a little bit. But once Cephalon Sai shuts the hell up, you can go ahead and donate the resources needed. And when Railjack first came out, the requirements to build one were way higher. So DE really nerfed the requirements needed to get a Railjack to make it way more accessible for a lot of players. So you shouldn't have too much of a hard time. Once you are back at your ship, Go ahead and head to your navigation, bring up your quest menu, and I believe your next quest is going to take you to Lua. And Lua is actually one of my favorite tile sets. Like, it's between Lua and the Void. But go ahead and head over to Lua, head to the objective location, and once again, this will play out like a pseudo defense mission, but remember you're on Lua, so now you really should expect sentience to show up. But don't worry, they shouldn't be too much trouble for you at this stage if you've made it this far in the game. But as you can see, these guys get kind of annoying because there's a couple blind spots over here. so. You're going to have to really be wary of the circle. Anyway, once you finish that one, you got to head to the dry dock, do the whole little bit again. I think I lost the footage for that section, but your next mission is going to take you to Sedna. And it's going to be 
another pseudo defense mission. So, once you spawn in, go ahead and head to your objective location and proceed to defend the area. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, Sedna and Grenier are probably my least favorite map in faction. Actually, I don't know. For my least favorite faction, it would probably be a tie between Corpus and Grenier because the thing about Infested is Infested can't really shoot back and I actually like Corrupted because I like the whole concept of Corrupted. And so, I don't know. Grenier, I never really enjoy fighting Grenier and I don't really care for Grenier tile sets like that, but go ahead and head over to the wreckage and defend the area. And once you do that, you should be able to extract, but once again, be wary of sentience because there will be sentience inbound. Anyway, guys, moving on. Once you have completed that mission, go ahead and head back to the dry dock and you know the drill by now. Listen to Cephalon sigh, whine about how he's not a viable Cephalon for the Railjack. And start building your next part. And I think for this, for this part, I actually kind of hit a wall as far as resources go. So, I'm going to travel to the dry dock and we're going to see. So go ahead and head to this terminal. Once Cephalon Psy finishes talking, you should be able to proceed. But as you can see, for this build, it requires a goddamn Argon Crystal. Who the fuck just has a goddamn Argon Crystal lying around? If you do not know, Argon Crystals have a 24-hour period before they disintegrate in your inventory. So, it's, an Argon Crystal, having to go farm an Argon Crystal is just one of those things that you're going to have to do. <laughs> no matter what MR you're at, you're eventually going to have to go farm an Argon Crystal, which is ridiculous. They should rework Argon Crystals because, I don't know, it just feels so noob, like, having to go to the void and do multiple runs just to find one Argon Crystal. And then on top of that, I feel like Necros has lost a lot of his practical application I feel like Necros is like not as good as he used to be. You're better off like using a frame where you're better off using a frame like Limbo. That's what I need. I need to make a Loot Explosion Limbo build because Loot Explosion Limbo is by far the best way to loot. I'm not saying that he can do all the stuff that Necros can do, but it's fucking damn near close like fucking 80% that's what I'm going to call the loot explosion loot explosion limbo this is necros this is 80% necros anyway guys if you don't know about the loot explosion limbo build it just involves making your range max with as low duration as possible you want to get your duration down to like 13% that way you can um, you can kind of spam your fourth ability and also it doesn't hurt to have high efficiency on that build but watch I'm gonna show you guys in the next video probably so go ahead and donate whatever resources are needed to continue with the build and from here, I believe you should be all good. I think this is the last 
part as far as what you need for rail jack requisitions but after you've done that what you're gonna need is a rail jack crew you're gonna need a rail jack crew so you have completed the rail jack mission at this point but you do not have everything you need for your rail jack so what you're gonna want to do is go ahead and head inside your rail jack that way you can go ahead and have the grand tour at least bam welcome to your rail jack unfortunately even though you have completed the rail jack mission you don't have a key so at some point you're gonna need to travel to the back of your ship you're gonna see a little objective marker down there and it's gonna prompt you to go to Lua and you go to Lua in order to get your key but we're not gonna do that right now where we're gonna do is we're gonna Delta our asses over to Fortuna that way we can talk to ticker in regards to a railjack crew so go ahead and spawn into Fortuna press start to bring up your fast travel menu and go ahead and travel to ticker and as you can see we got the call of the Tempestari mission because we completed the rising tide mission but we're not gonna worry about that just yet what you want to do is fast travel over to ticker now scroll down to hire railjack crew and the thing about scouting for a railjack crew is the ideal crewmate will have a three or four in repair that's what you really are looking for you're looking for a crewmate with the highest repair skill possible but having said that if you get one that does not have a high repair skill you can still spec points into repair so keep that in mind all you'll really need is one good crewmate that has high repair or you'll be able to spec repair into them and as you can see some crewmates you can hire for resources while others cost credits and so I'm gonna hire that guy because I have plenty of gal rods and I'm gonna hire this girl because with the best credit farm that I posted to that channel as a new player in this game like I have no problem accumulating credits and so if you're trying to customize your railjack you can do a little bit from your ship so if you head to the railjack hologram in the corner by your navigation you can modify your railjack from here and you can also spec into your intrinsics from here and so if you're new to all of this I highly suggest you watch the credit farm video because we actually go over intrinsics in that video and we show you how to get to at least rank one which is pretty much a process of just playing railjack but I'm not gonna show you guys an actual build because I still have to level up all my mods but on my primary account I will show you guys what my railjack looks like so this is what I run on my railjack so when acquiring parts for your railjack you're always gonna want mk3 parts if you don't have mk3 I don't think it's really worth it but as far as mods goes this is the build that I run on my railjack and as far as battle mods seeker volley this is the clutch mod for this build if you don't have anything else get fucking seeker volley because that's the clutch mod here and as you can see for tactical 
I only have two out of the three um, filled out because I don't have a, another mod to match that polarity slot. And this is my intrinsic tree and this is my crew. And so usually I like to run a Lich as one of my crewmates. And so usually I will swap out one of these guys and I will set them to defend the ship. And I usually like to go with the Kuva Lich or my big sister. And so in cases of Rojack, I really like my big sister. So bam, this is my Rojack crew guys. And this is my actual Rojack. It's not much to look at, but I really like it. I think the custom Railjack skin that you buy looks a lot better than the one DE offers you. And I think that's intentional. <laughs> the one that you get for free, the paint looks all worn and shit. But yeah, guys. This is my rail jack. This is at world's end. Anyway, moving on to what you probably have. Bam. So, when customizing your rail jack, you're going to use these two terminals right here, right? And like I said, you want to have MK3 artillery on your rail jack. Or I really don't think it's worth it, but depending on the missions that you have completed, you likely only have MK2 or MK1 stuff. Now you can go ahead and click on that stuff and you can choose to restore it or you can just scrap it for Indo. Personally, I scrap that stuff for Indo because I realized that I only have MK2 items, but it's not a big deal because your clan more than likely your clan has already done a lot of research to get mk1 weapons or artillery for your railjack so the first thing you should do is head over to the other terminal and see what your clan has already completed the research on before you proceed but anyway this is your modding section. You have integrated mods as well as battle mods as well as tactical mods. And it does get a little expensive to level all this stuff up. But if you're doing railjack missions just joining random crews, usually you can get a pretty good endo reward from running railjack, so keep that in mind. And as far as intrinsics, I showed you guys my intrinsic section. Every time you rank up intrinsics, it doubles the cost. It starts off at one and goes up from there to two, to four, to eight, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna level this all up to six because I just don't give a fuck. And as you can see, it costs 32 per node. And if I were to do it again, it will cost 64 per node. So keep that in mind once you get past like intrinsic level four it starts to get a little bit expensive but they do have some really good perks in these intrinsic trees so it is something that you're going to want to do so next this is the crew we hired as you can see this is where you would equip any crewmates that you have in storage and you can also customize their appearance so just to make him feel like he's one of the boys we're gonna go ahead and put a color scheme on him and obviously this is a free to play account right here this isn't my primary account so I don't have a lot of colors unlock I only have the the free strip of colors on the classic strip as well as the shamrock color set because on I think it was St. Patty's Day on St. Patty's Day that color palette only cost it one credit so yeah it's enough to put a little something something on this guy so after we put 
a color scheme on him. We're going to rank some of this guy's skills up. Remember what I said. You primarily want to focus on repair. Repair is easily the best stat to have on one of your crewmates because the thing is if your railjack takes damage your crewmates can just repair that without you even having to tend to it you don't even have to stop what you're doing you can just keep the offense going and your crew will repair any damages that are inside your ship and they will do it in a fast manner and they do it even better than a lot of players because a lot of players are running around trying to locate the source of the of the repair and then once they get that sometimes they they're fiddling with their omni tool <laughs> and it's just a mess especially if it's a new player so yeah make sure you spec into repair it's by far the most valuable stat. I cannot stress that enough. Also, guys, don't forget to assign a role for your crewmate. And so, obviously, if they're going to be repairing your ship, you're going to want them as the engineer. And I guess for her, I'm not really worried about what she's doing as much as I'm worried about what he's doing. So, keep that in mind, guys. Make sure you assign a role to your Railjack crew. So that way, they know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> anyway, guys, moving on to customization. If you want to put a color scheme on your Railjack, which you absolutely should, go ahead and choose any color scheme that resonates with you I'm gonna kinda go with a red and gold aesthetic but remember what I said before since the technically you did get the rail jack for free it looks super worn like the paint on it looks super worn I can't really stand that I wish DE would stop doing that but that's kinda your incentive to get a better looking rail jack which you absolutely don't need because when it comes down to it who the hell is really looking at your rail jack besides you who I'll wait yeah absolutely nobody that's fucking who <laughs> especially because once you get to rank one in one of your intrinsic trees it allows you to teleport back to the ship and at that point when you can teleport you never see the ship so yeah keep that in mind so bam this is my road jack not much to look at but if I did have one of the custom skins this is how it would look doesn't that look way fresher bam doesn't that look so much better that looks a hundred percent better just on the fact that the paint isn't worn out it looks a hundred percent better and so yeah that is my rail jack now next thing you should do is head over to the next terminal because this is going to show you the rail jack parts that your crew has completed the research for and as you can see my crew has completed the research for a lot of MK3 artillery so I'm gonna go ahead and just fabricate a lot of this that way I instantly have access to it keep in mind if you're gonna fabricate this you have to have the resources available to do so and it turns out on that credit farm video that I posted to my channel it is all about rail jack it's pretty much all about joining a random crew and playing a rail jack and while you're doing that you will passively accumulate all of these resources like it's nobody's business 
So I'm gonna head to my Sigma Shield array and I'm gonna throw on the Sigma Shield MK3. I'm gonna head to the Sigma engines, but it looks like I forgot to buy engines, but no worries. I got MK3 Sigma plating and an MK3 Sigma reactor. And so I'm gonna head back over here and I'm gonna buy the Sigma MK3 engines. I'm gonna fabricate that real quick. And we're gonna jump back over and we're gonna throw those engines onto this bitch. And bam. Next, we're gonna move to our artillery section. And keep in mind, guys, the extra MK2 and MK1 parts you have in your inventory, those each sell for 150 endo. So keep that in mind. If you're running low on endo in a pinch, this can get you a decent amount, especially considering the fact that you just can't use them. Anyway, as far as artillery goes, as you can see, we have the Carcinox. Is that how you pronounce that shit? MK3. And it looks like I forgot to buy a second weapon, but I'll do that in a moment. But as you can see, we are absolutely loaded up and ready to go. With this, we should be able to conquer anything the world throws at us. Anyway, 